So uh, yeah, this is uh, been wanting to do more live streams as part of HamBSD. Um, I, don't, I don't just want it to be a system that uh, uh, just just gets used for uh, a few few groups. I, I, I want it to be a system that's uh, ex extendable and and uh, a, a series of reusable components. Um, and the the best way to make them reusable is is not just through code quality, but also through um, providing uh, documentation and helping others to understand how to reuse them. Um, and I, I I think it's not just uh, how the say the APIs work uh, and that sort of thing. It's it's also w what were my intentions when I was writing that API, how did I expect that you would use it? So you might be able to put together something that that works, but then maybe I do something in the future that breaks what you were doing because you'd made an assumption about the way that I'd intended it to be used, and then you've used it in, in a different way that I didn't expect, and I've then broken that. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I wanted to do more of these and, and uh, really communicate as the project comes along uh, wh where I think it's going and then also give an opportunity for uh, other other amateurs to give feedback and maybe there are some easy wins where there's something that I can do quite easily that for you would be a, a big time saver or, or a sort of low-hanging fruit. Um, so t today I'm working on uh, this Python library. Uh, I've, I've come up with a uh, I think a rather clever name for it, uh, APIRS. Um, and this this library is uh, intended to implement most of APRS. So the the specs on the APRS website. There's this PDF. Uh, we, we we can take a look. Um, so if we go to APRS.org, this is the official APRS website. Um, and then if we look down here there is uh, where where is it <laughs> uh, specific here we go um so that no that's the errata uh so there's these original text files ah uh, oh, okay um uh, <laughs> this website is not great. Is this where I'm... So the, usually the way that I find it is I, I Google for APRS101.pdf um, and, and then I find the PDF document. And that's how I usually get to it. Um, and it's, it's 101 because it's version 101 not because it's uh, an introduction to the the protocol by by no means could it be considered that um, and this is a, a very long document that covers all of the the different encodings uh, packet formats that are used um, and and some of it's defined rather well other bits are left open to interpretation but this this is the the latest full complete document that described the state of the protocol. Um, if we look at the addendum 1.1, this was a series of additions to the original protocol that, that are kind of patches. Um, so these were never integrated into that document. So you have to read the original document and then you have to read these addendums that sit on top of the original document. Um, the, there's of course there's mistakes in there that get corrected. Um, there's the, the the symbol tables uh, get updated uh, and some of these are maintained in separate text files so the the two calls um, that define wh what how to identify your software uh, when you send packets those are maintained in a separate document and and so are the the symbols and then there's user defined 
data types as well are maintained in another separate document and this they kind of exist separately from the the standardization process um, so that's that's uh, 1.1 and then we then we've got the APRSIS which doesn't really have a spec as such it's it's kind of based on the idea that you have the monitor mode of your TNC being piped into a telnet server and then everything built on that protocol without breaking anything going backwards um, so there's, a, there's, there's problems with this but also it's it's a system that is deployed and works so it's the system that every, everyone uses um, just yeah so these links go to the APRS uh, IS website so that's that's 1.1 but then there's also there's 1.2 um, which are a series of patches that can patch either the original spec or their updates to the addendum and I, I don't know now if 1.2 is considered a standard or if this is still evolving um, but the so the way that I look at this in HamBSD is not that there is this APRS working group that is working on producing these standards and going through a, a process with uh, consensus or anything like this mostly APRS has evolved very organically uh, with things being done in backwards compatible ways um, but not necessarily thinking so much about forward compatibility and what you might prevent from uh, being done in the future by making some decision now uh, the, there's also some some hacks such as the uh, high precision uh, location packets are really it's it's done in a way to add extra precision but still be able to decode the lower precision uh, it it just ends up being a mess for parsers and if you if you've done anything looking at computer security and you you look at where there are commonly bugs um, it's going to be in in uh, parsing user provided data so it's all of this data that's on the air that you have to make some sense of and there's there's hundreds of different code paths that you might go through in order to decode okay is this a position packet does it have a data extension um, is the data extension one of the types of extension that actually is more than the number of bytes that they were meant to be um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of uh, rules set down in in here if we look at um, where's the, so data extensions are on page 27 there's if if you're looking at this document there are 10 pages before the page number starts so you can just jump to 37 and that will be page 27 in the thing I've spent a lot of time in this document so APRS data extensions are a fixed length 7 byte field uh, okay unless there's a special case of uh, uh, DF reports and in that case, where where is it? Uh, oh, it's one of these. Is it this one? Yeah, D DF reports contain an eight byte field. Um, so that's now lo no longer a fixed seven byte field. Uh, you get you get these. Uh, discrepancies where you think it's going to be simple to implement a, a thing and then you've got all of these special cases that modify the behavior of that thing uh, but anyway so looking at the the data extensions that's where I first started tackling the protocol as a, a unit of data that could be uh, decoded and encoded So here's the uh, APIRS data extensions documentation, um, and yeah, so I've I've got to do notes here that there are still special cases that are not handled. 
um, but generally I've got the uh, so that this is the course and speed uh, data extension which you'll see mobiles and handhelds add to position reports um, and this this is used to just represent course and speed of a vehicle or a pedestrian uh, and interestingly <laughs> the the format uh, when it's transmitted as a packet encodes the speed in knots um, as in the uh, nautical uh, unit of speed which which might be because uh, WB4 APR was originally at the uh, US Naval Academy when he was working on this uh, it, it was something to do with the Navy um, but anyway so in APIRS all of the API will treat the speed as kilometers per hour. All of the units inside APRS are metric units. And then when a value comes in, it's immediately converted into the metric. And only when it goes out again, encoded in a, a packet, will it get converted back into the wire format. Um, in case you're inspecting these packets with Wireshark or something, uh, I've, I've added into the documentation what the wire format units are uh, and you can see there the conversions. Uh, I've got some examples here in the, the documentation so you can see here this is a, a vehicle that's traveling uh, 88 degree bearing and it's traveling at 66.6 .6 kilometers per hour which is 36 knots. Um, and you can see when you, you put in that data extension as it would be in the packet it gets converted into kilometers per hour. It's the same with uh, uh, going the other the other direction um, is this the... that's the wrong um, wrong class I've spotted there so that, that should be course speed uh, but yeah, going the other direction, you, you in the API put in the kilometers per hour, and then you'll get knots out. Uh, okay, so let's actually, now that that's been spotted, whoa, I pressed the wrong button and lost my screen. Uh, okay, now that's spotted, let's actually just uh, go and fix that. Okay, so I'm doing uh, development with a, a Python virtual environment. Uh, so I'll just activate that. And then... Um, APIRS. I don't know what it's called for a moment there. Extension. And then in... Course speed. And this example would be course speed. Let's call it C instead of W. Okay, and those those examples are not just there for documentation, they're also tests. So if I run Tox now, it will run those tests and make sure that um, they're still still passing. So you see it's this uh, with doc test uh, runs those. And one one of the reasons for for having the tests is is not just to make sure that the code is good, but it's it's to test the assumptions that I've made about how the APRS protocol was intended to be used. So if I've got something and I've encoded it in a certain way, um, and then and then I can perform some tests to make sure that my assumptions were correct, and maybe there's something where there's a, a type of packet that I didn't think these two things could be combined together and then something odd happens that I wasn't expecting. The, the tests are there to to catch that so that I can add a, doc, a note to the documentation to warn those that are using those functions or those classes that something unexpected might happen. 
But okay, so that's that's all works nicely. And I'll just commit that. I don't know if I can push, let's find out. Yeah, okay. I, I, my SSH key is on a, a Uber key, so I wasn't sure if it was going to work in this uh, environment I'm using for streaming. Okay, so the the thing that uh, I, I, I wanted to do as part of today's uh, hacking is going to be my key reports, which at the moment I've got nothing. So the the my key reports, I need to go back to the PDF. And they are described here. Um, so the the MyKey data format is a, a way of compressing your position report uh, so that you can fit more information in, uh, have a shorter packet and it also allows you to have some some nice features like uh, uh, better precision on your uh, GPS location because you've used this encoded format. Uh, one second, I'm just going to have something to drink. Okay, yeah. Yeah, being in lockdown is not used to talking for such a long period of time. Um, okay, so the uh, there's there's a, a number of things that are encoded into the the packet, and they're not just encoded in the information field which is the, the AX25 payload, as it were. They also take the destination address field and use those seven bytes to encode information as well. So when you're encoding these packets, it's not just producing uh, the payload. It's influencing the, the whole uh, packet. There's a, a layer violation here, is, is what I, I would call it. Um, but this is, if you uh, look at uh, APRSIS at least, um, it, it is incredibly popular uh, to use MyKey for encoding your uh, position reports and all of the APRS uh, mobiles and handhelds um, are all using the MyKey encoding so it's important to be able to to encode and decode these because they are used and if you want to have compatibility with existing things so I guess maybe the first thing to tackle is the So much, so much. Okay, let's let's tackle the destination address field first. Um, so this contains six latitude digits, minutes and hundreds of minutes. So that's uh, again is the degrees minutes and decimal minutes um, that are are common in common in APRS although uh, I thought this was supposed to have a higher precision but it doesn't actually look like it 
does. Okay, that's odd. This is uh, the six digits in um, an ordinary pos uh, position report. Uh, okay, and then a three bit Mikey message identifier message bits A, B, and C. North, south, longitude offset to add degrees to the longitude computation in the information field. Okay, and then one bit of each of these is then used Yeah, it looks like one bit of each of the the things in the field are, are used for encoding something extra. So the, the, the destination address field, I'm expecting this to be um, oh yeah, okay, yeah, because it's, it's got to be a ASCII character in order for it to be a valid AX25 address. So it looks like they've got a table How how do these match up? Do you actually look these up in a table? Is there any way of deriving this table? One to six, one to three. Ah, okay, right. So this is latitude digit one, latitude digit two, latitude digit three, four, five, and six. So these 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 match up here, and then it's not that you have to match all of these across. It's you you have the latitude digit and then one of these. So the first one would be latitude digit and then message. A. Is that right? Yeah, lat and bit A, bit B, and bit C. And the bits are 3 bit message identifier. Okay, and then we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And three spaces, which is one standard, uh, zero, and one custom. So yeah, so they've they've got an encoding here that's looking at having this digit makes up most of the the data, but then there's one bit, and then yeah, north and south for each zero one to zero to nine and zero to nine again here or a space um, offset with plus zero and a space space plus one hundred east and west. So these 
much up here. Right, let's 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 try writing some code. Uh, do, do let me know on the chat if it's if anything's too small. I can. Uh, I can't actually increase the font size. I don't know how to do that, but at least I'd know. Um, Digit, which will be an int, and hmm. so the, the the way that I think I'd like to do this is all of, all of the rest of them are binary values. Um, except for the message bits because it's possible to have I mean it's not it's not really a bit is it it's uh it's, it's three values that it can have uh so it's you know ternary or or whatever um I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it an int at the moment. Um, and we'll say that the uh, custom is two. Standard is one and uh, zero is zero. Um, Take odd zero. That gives us the the value of the the ASCII character as an int. Um, so we've got forty eight. Plus the latitude digit. Let's say the latitude digit is two. And. Uh, Then we've got fifty. So I'm sure fifty is two. So that would encode that. So we'd we so I think we're choosing the ASCII character that we start with based on the value of this bit. And if the latitude digit is a ah, okay, latitude digit can't be a, a, an int because it can also be a space. Um, so the latitude digit has to be a string. Um, that's that's annoying. Uh, at some point in the future, I might get frustrated with that and create a new data type that can be either a digit or a, a space. But you know, Python typing is not uh, not great anyway. Um, but I, I I have caught a couple of things here with uh, uh, mostly converting between floats and ints. Um, 
So it's, it's I think, good to good to have the annotations there. Okay, so let's say if um, well, if the latitude digit is a string, then it's going to come in as So yeah, if if it's a space, uh, we'll leave that for later. If Well, actually, it, it it must be then. If it's not a space, it's between zero and nine, and then we can uh, convert it to an int, and then say if bit is zero. One we're going to say is this one standard, uh, and that starts at P. And then if it's a custom, and uh, then that's going to start at A. So I'm glad at least that this is not crossing uh, the boundary between uh, numerals and uh, alphabet characters because then we'd have to work out which side of that it's on and then work out a different offset. But that, that should um, I think that, that should work. Uh, If we say the um, zero and zero, zero and one, so that should be uh, zero and P. Okay, let's uh, get creative. <laughs> okay, I was trying to spell ham BSD, but I, there's no M. Uh, okay, B is going to be uh, 1, 2, S is going to be 3, 1, and D is going to be uh, 3, 2. Ha BSD. Okay, imagine there was an M there. So we've got that, we've now still got to get though the 
spaces. So if it's a space, um, I think this is just something to brute force code. Um, if it is uh, custom is two. K if it is one return Z and if it is zero return L. Okay, so now we can encode these bytes um, and use the the various things that, that we need. Okay, let's let's try out encoding this. Uh, example that they've got. A lot of the tests that I've done uh, based on the examples in the the reference um, just so that I can make sure that the tests that I've done match up and cover everything that was covered in the reference but then I also try and add my own tests and try and think critically uh, sorry critically about about how, how it's been implemented so I can try and break it um, and make sure that those tests are there to catch me breaking it in the future when I come and uh, I decide that I want to refactor something. Um, I, can, I can do that with confidence because I know that the tests are going to uh, catch anything that I've broken. So, okay, so the latitude digits are 3, 3, 2, 5, 6, and 4. Okay, and then one zero zero north is one plus zero is zero. Wait a second. One zero zero. Three three two five. Some, something's gone. Gone. One, two, three. One, zero, zero. One, zero. West is one. So it was uh, all of these grids. It's it's hard to keep track of which column you're on. Okay, and I get out then S three two, S three two U six T. So okay, so those those bytes are encoding. Um, so then the next next up is these uh, these messages. So how do how do I want to do these? Uh, okay, so this this is another one of those things where things can get ambiguous. Um, so. In the encoding table here, uh, you, you've got this which is one custom, and this which is one standard over here. Uh, so we've called standard is one in our, our bit, and then uh, custom is two, which is a, a alternate reality version of one. Um, in order to determine whether you're looking at a 
custom message or a standard message, you have to look at each of the three bits. But the first bit might be standard, and then the next one is standard, and then the third one is custom. And it looks like the decoding should be for custom messages, one or more of the message identifier bits is a one shown in the Mikey destination encoding table as one custom. So, okay, so you have to check all three um, before you can decide that uh, it's it's a custom message or a, a standard message. And I'm, the the thing when you're when you're passing packets, you want to be able to pass a packet as quickly as possible, because typically one of the first things that you do when you receive packets is you filter. Um, your network interface card is in hardware already looking at the MAC address on a packet to decide whether or not to even pass it into your into your uh, kernel, because for the most part you probably don't care about Ethernet frames that were addressed to another person. You can put your network card in promiscuous mode and receive all of the packets if you want, but usually that's just triggering a bunch of interrupts on the processor that you don't really care about. So having to look at all three of those bits before you can decide whether this is a custom message or a, a standard message uh, means that you can't filter these messages as efficiently as, as you might like to. Um, custom messages may be assigned any arbitrary meaning. Okay, I've, I've never seen the custom messages used. Uh, I, I've seen that people implement the support for uh, encoding them and decoding them and maybe there are groups out there that, that uh, have assigned some meaning to them but I don't know of any commonly uh, used framework for these uh, these messages. In fact I, I don't really know anyone that uses the uh, standard messages, they, they s just use the uh, uh, comment field Okay, well, anyway, so there's two classes of messages, custom messages and uh, standard messages. Zero, one, two, three. It's, it's interesting to look at the binary encoding for these. So, zero, off-duty off or custom zero, A, B, and C are all one. Uh, and then the next one is message one, which is uh, encoded as six. And then this is encoded as five, Four, three, two, one. It's a it's an inverse mask. Um, let's see. Uh, I've completely forgotten how to do these. Um, I've been writing Python for many, many years, more than half a decade, and I still have to look at documentation when it comes to remembering how to do some some things. So we'll 
generally you, you define a, your, your data stuff at the, the start of a project and then you spend most of the time working on the logic in it so unless you've done this recently it's likely you've written your enum and then you've never gone back to doing it again and you just forget how to do it Okay, I think this is what I need. It's the new um, Yeah, so value label This can't be. No, this isn't right at all. Uh, I think the one that I'm looking for had something to do with. Yeah, okay. No, it's in it. So for emergency, it, do, it doesn't have a, a number, but I'm going to give it here the number 7, because when that's inverted, it will be 0, 0, 0. Self-index message. these yeah self dot index self dot message equals message and then I can create uh, uh, so I need I need to access individual bits Oh, 
I, I wonder if there's some sort of bit split um, Oh, a bit bit manipulation uh, wiki page. Let's try that. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna be what I want. So there's three bits. Take the number that we have. So the number is, say, two. And two is M2 in service, which should be encoded as five. So we do uh, not two. Is that right? Right, okay, so because it is a signed integer, doing a bitwise inversion is going to give, yeah, okay, so instead of trying to be clever, what we can do is 7 minus 2 is 5. Um, And then we need to get How do, we, how do we get the bits out?
Okay, so the, the the one way of doing it is going to be I just, I just figured out why uh, any one of the bits can be a custom bit or a standard bit um, because to represent numbers at some point you're also going to need zeros uh, so you'd, you'd probably do okay looking for the first one and then comparing uh, but because that wasn't in the spec you do still have to check all of them This is this is not very elegant, but it will let us move on. Okay. Um No, that's not what I meant. dot m0 is the off duty message and the bits for that message is 111. Yeah, 111. Okay. M1, 110, uh, M5, oh, okay, that's, um, because it's got a leading zero, yeah, So it, it it doesn't work. I bet it then doesn't work for M4 because it's got a leading zero. Um, and then for emergency, yeah. So the leading zero gets dropped and it's not in the output. Um, Zero B is five. Ah, uh, that's really not. Zero, zero, zero. That's really not elegant, and I hate it. I'm going to go back and fix that later. But okay, so we've now got uh, the emergency bits and the bits for uh, these messages. Um, we can add So yeah, so f for the custom messages, what we would do, I won't do it now, um, but instead of returning a 1 when that's 1, I'd return a 2, and then that will go in here um, and correctly do the uh, encoding for custom messages. So let's go back to the example. 
and see if we can encode the first three bits. So the message is 100, which is this M3 message. First latitude byte is three, and then we'll take message bits zero. And then the next one is three, and it's two, and then we'll message bits one and two. So we should get S32. If I can put the correct number of closing brackets S32 okay and then we've got north south these offsets okay so the last two here are for the uh, longitude but okay so that's uh, coming up to an hour now on the the stream um, I could do with a, a quick break um, but yeah I'll uh, um, I'll, I'll stop the recording uh, in a minute and uh, this will uh, go on uh, YouTube later today. Uh, thanks to uh, those of you who have uh, stayed on the stream the whole time. Uh, that's uh, encouraging. I hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, I'm hoping I can I can do these again. The production value should <laughs> hopefully uh, go up over time. Um, I've got uh, some some cameras that I, I've put onto the the radios in the past to show uh, uh, where I've been working with the radio um, shown the, the meters and the, the uh, transmit receive LED and, and that sort of thing um, so I'll, I'll carry on working on this uh, so sometimes it's easier um, just to, to tidy things up a bit uh, when when I'm not on a on a stream, but it's it's also it's fun to to go through this and and talking into the talking into the stream, even even if there's uh, no one in the chat, uh, can still help to work through what it is that I need to need to do. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll show off uh, the recording here. If if um, you would like to support HamBSD, uh, you can always sign up on the Patreon and even if you want to give uh, it says the lowest tier is three dollars a month it's you can you can give as little as one dollar a month and uh, you'll just get a a monthly update from me uh, about what it is that I've been working on on uh, how BSD um, okay so uh, I will hopefully see you for a stream in the future